if I had a segment that is the present configuration, look, now I'm thinking of segments that are oriented in the uh, uh, Cartesian coordinate directions at the material, at the spatial configuration, at the deformed configuration. So if I have a particle P prime at the deformed configuration and a neighborhood particle who's oriented in the directions uh, of the first Cartesian direction, so T1 is 1, 0, 0, differential of X is differential of Z, 0, 0, T uh, ET is E11, that first component of the spatial strain tensor, and lambda, the stretch, is obtained as a square root of 1 plus minus 2 E11. One one. So that can be extended. Look that the formula is different. The formula for material configuration has the square root uh, uh, below, okay? And for the other one, uh, had the square root, look, above, okay? So that no, never forget that. But anyway, what is important is that in both cases, they involve the component E11 or component EXX. And the same for the other coordinates. So the stretches or the unit elongations of segments that are the spatial configuration are oriented in the directions X or Y or Z can be computed just with the help of these values. So the values of the components of the strain tensor, the spatial strain tensor, call also longitudinal strains, spatial strains, the other are material strains. Longitudinal spatial strains inform about the increase of length of the with respect to the corresponding spatial position or spatial uh, uh, relative position due to the formation. So what happens is we find in a components of the strain tensor in a certain point that EXX is positive. What can we say? Well, that if we take a segment at the spatial configuration, which is oriented in the X direction, at the material configuration, so before the deformation, that segment maybe is not no longer in the, in, the, in the X direction anymore. It was in another direction. But we can say that it was shorter, so I mean the final value is larger than uh, the final value. So the, 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 that segment has increased its length if EXX is positive, and similar conclusion about that. So again, if they are zero, that means that the angles, the, the segments have uh, kept the same length, although they, can have, have, they, they may have rotated, but uh, if, they, if they are positive, it means that the segment have increased the length. The same we can do about the interpretation of the other terms of the uh, strain tensor, for instance, if we take two segments at the deformed configuration, now we are talking about deformed configuration, that were oriented along the directions x1 and x2, the, these, these segments at the reference configuration form an angle, formed in past, an angle that is no longer, that was no longer uh, a pi over 2, was another one, another angle. So that the angle can be com computed through that formula that can be written like that. Look, this minus sign here. So finally, that, that the angle can be written in that day. The, the original angle was the final angle, which I know, pi over 2, plus this expression here. So the increment, which is pi over 2, I, I got this, I passed this term to the other side, and this term to that side. That's what we have here. So the increment, which is the final one, which is pi over 2, minus the original one, which I don't know, the increment can be given in that formula with a minus in front that involves here the values of the out of diagonal term x, y, and the diagonal terms 
E, e, X, X, e, X, Y. So, in summary, we can say that these angular, these strains, but this is why they are called angular strains. By the way, I forgot to say that in here. In here, these terms, uh, no, in the, in the material, these terms here are also called angular strains. In both cases, the strains at the diagonal are called longitudinal strains. And the strains out of the diagonal terms, either here or here, they are the same, they are symmetric, are called angular strains. Why? Because they inform about angles. And these inform just about lengths. So, again, the strains out of the diagonal, these strains here, are called angular strains, angular spatial strains inform about change of angles of segments that at the final configuration, at the present configuration, are oriented in directions x, y, or directions x, z, or directions y, z. Look that if these values are zero, that means that the angles haven't changed. If these values are positive, that means that the angle with respect to the original configuration being pi over 2 has decreased. If they are ne negative, it means that the increment of the angle, the increment is always the final minus the initial. The final now is low, pi over 2. The initial is whatever it was. But if those values are negative, that means that the angle has increased. If those values are positive, that means that the angles have decreased. Well, it's not much. It's not as much as we would like. But at least we have information about the meaning of every of these terms of the uh, strain tensor. Okay? So, again, this can be represented in this plot. And now, what is an ortho orthogonal parallel pipette is at the present configuration. So, at the present configuration, we have something which is orthogonal and following the directions of the uh, Cartesian uh, directions. And now, we know that how was, we can wonder, how was, how was in the past? How was the shape of this parallel pipette in the, conf in the reference configuration? It was no longer a parallel pipette, that these angles were not orthogonal, but we know that the length of segment PQ and the segment PQ prime were uh, related to the EXX uh, term of the strain tensor. The length of the P prime R or the PR at the reference configuration is given in terms of the EYY and so on. Okay? And the angles at the reference configuration of segment that at the present configurations are oriented in directions XY are given in terms of EXY, EXX, and EYY according to this formula and so on. 